Hello, I'm Hugh Collingborn. I'm the instructor in this series about programming for beginners and in this episode we'll be looking at functions. Most modern programming languages let you divide your code up into named subroutines or functions. Functions avoid repetition. For example, let's assume that you want to calculate the tax on 100 items. Without a function, you would have to write the calculation code 100 times. But if you wrap that code up into a named function, you would just call that function by name whenever you need to do the calculation. Let's look at a, an actual example in Ruby. Now, here's an example with no functions. Here I want to calculate the tax on a number of items, and each time I do this, I have to repeat the same chunk of code. If I needed to do it 100 or 1,000 times, I'd have to repeat that bit of code 100 or 1,000 times. So here I've got it done one, two, three, four times. Let's run the program. And you can see there's the result. But the code is very repetitious. Now, this is the rewritten code. This time, I've put all the calculation code into a named function called calc totals. And now, whenever I want to use that code, I just call the function by name and I pass to it the value that I want to be used in the tax calculation. And again, I've got four calculations. And if I run this, this is called test two. The end result is just the same, but my code is a lot simpler. Some functions return no values. In languages such as C, C Sharp and Java, a function that does not return a value is preceded by the special keyword void. In the Pascal language, and here you can see Pascal in Delphi, in the Pascal language, a function that returns no value must be declared as a procedure, and only a function that returns a value is declared as a function. I'll explain about returning values shortly. For the sake of simplicity, I'm going to stick to an example in C Sharp for the rest of this video. The exact syntax of how to declare and use functions varies a good deal from language to language, but the principles are pretty much the same. First, let me explain return values. When a piece of code calls a function, it might want some value to be returned from that function. For example, the result of a calculation that is done inside the function. In C Sharp, when I want to return a value, I write the return keyword and then the value to be returned. The type of this value must match the type that's been declared in the function header. For example, here that's a string. Code outside the function can call the function by its name. When a value is returned, that value can then be assigned to a variable of the appropriate type. Now here, for example, the variable calc result is a string, and it's assigned the string that's been returned from the add numbers function. Some functions may also take one or more arguments. Arguments are bits of data that can be sent to the function. The function receives the arguments as a list of one or more items. In C Sharp and in many other languages, the arguments or parameters must be given data types and the arguments sent must match the types that have been declared. These arguments can be used inside the function and there they act like local variables. That is, the names of the arguments only exist inside the function itself. So the code inside the function can refer to them, code outside the function cannot. They are said to be local to that function. Incidentally, in object-oriented languages, functions may be bound into objects, and functions are then called methods. I'll have more to say about objects and methods in another tutorial. Learn programming and the business of programming at www.bitwisecourses.com